well at 22 minutes after four thank you so much for keeping it on the hot drive and of course as we've been promising you joining us now is the former nairobi business district association chairman timothy morioki karibu sana to the show asante sana tell me how would you describe our economy right now because we're talking about jobs 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 and the fact that a lot of young people are writing into us and telling us they're out of school they're educated zero work well and first of all um i like the fact that uh hope drive is addressing that issue the current unemployment rate we're talking about is 11.47 percent that's about 1.4 million kenyans who uh, have got no jobs and you're also talking about an output of 22 public universities and about another 27 private universities who are churning out people annually mm -hmm. and what we do not know is what is whether is what is being produced at the universities is matching what is available mm -hmm. so we have a large pool of people who are not getting matched to the jobs that they they probably were wishing to get mm -hmm. or they were uh, you know were trained for and that kind of mismatch obviously causes us to have a, a large number of people uh, going unemployed. But it also sounds to me like in those industries that they haven't expanded enough so that young people can actually get employed in them. For instance, uh, look at even our sector, yeah, radio, telecommunications. You won't believe how many CVs we get. Young people with a lot of potential, by the way, but this simply isn't the opening. Are businesses uh, not growing fast enough as well to absorb? I think that uh, we have an opportunity of growing our businesses faster. And and I want to remind you, as we are talking about this radio, if you were here 10 years ago, mm. the number of people who are employed in this station probably have uh, could have if not uh, maybe times 10. Uh, so I believe that there are opportunities out there that we can go for. There are opportunities to expand. And probably just let us look at what now the big four is looking at. If you look at the big four, uh, which uh, His Excellency the President has has uh, focused on, if you look at manufacturing, for example, and you say that 30 million pairs of shoes are bought in Kenya every other year, and we have kept on in, in importing our shoes, it means that shift of policy position that um, uh, our, our, our President has sponsored uh, then means that we have to engage people to produce those shoes or to, to, to uh, you know, get into that industry Absolutely. and therefore creating jobs. Mm -hmm. If you look at textiles, we do import a lot of clothes and uh, yet you know that there are cotton growing country and you know that there are also textile industries over here. You also understand that we do buy a lot of textiles from out there, in fact material, raw, raw cloth from out there and yet we have industries here that do that. So if we shift policy towards that direction of producing our own textile and you know doing our own clothes then you get the jobs yeah i know you might think that i'm making it very very easy or look easy but um let me say this um it's a responsibility of the government to sponsor or to help in shifting policy and where you have um um uh you know industries like uh, uh what I've mentioned, textiles, mm. where you have food processing, where you have uh, even the motor vehicle assembly plants that are now coming in. It's, it's, it's very, very, very important that uh, uh, we sensitize our youth so that even the skills that they're preparing themselves for are matching that uh, policy shift focus. And that's true, but you know, there's also the side of the importers, right? So if there's policy right now about growing manufacturing and making our shoes here at home, etc., we equally shouldn't be importing so many at a cheap cost. And we'll talk about that later and what young people, you know, which areas they should be looking at right now that's relevant. Still so many people are out of work, even with, you know, talk about youth fund or women's fund, whatever fund um, that is out there by government, still people tell us they're not able to access the money and to convert that into jobs. Why is that? What's the disconnect? Like I've told you, and one we have uh, we've got uh, the issue of uh, people who dropped out of school, um, did not tran transit from uh, primary to high school, and you'd expect the, those people if they do not go to tertiary institutions, then we have a problem right there. Then we have also got dropouts at uh, the high school level. 
and uh, those who do not get to get a high, high, high education, and then coupled up with poverty, because that's one area where we need to obviously think about. If you and if you go to the slums, the people who live on a fifty bob a day, fifty bob is enough for somebody to live uh, or to eat, uh, get a meal, and uh, some people don't even have, can afford that. So you can see that poverty level is bound to drive those people into crime. Of course, um, like many people will tell you, and, and it, it's a fact, there are those who choose de deliberately not to you know, engage in crime. But there are those who get driven towards crime and they decide that's they're going to be their way of life. Obviously the circumstances are that there will be that temptation. They are only human yeah. to, to go to crime. But stay with us, Tip, because we are talking, as we've said, jobs, jobs, jobs. What's not working in this economy? And if you're out of work, how you can access the money to start your own hustle. Uh, Timothy Murioki is the former Nairobi Business District Association chairman. He'll be giving us the insider scoop, if you like, in that regard, which gets are paying. Stay with us.